Hi everyone, I'm going to try and answer some of the questions that you asked me on uh, my Instagram story for a live video, which isn't actually going to be live because I live in quite a rural area and um, my Wi-Fi is not very forgiving. Right, here we go. Uh, first question, I still can't decide default or defender. I keep changing my mind, help. I'm not entirely sure how I can be of be of help. I'd look closely at but what both um, what both vehicles represent and what they were made for and what they can offer you. I remember a, uh, a Land Rover owner magazine. Um, it had a Discovery 2 on the front cover and um, it said uh, Discovery just as capable as Defender. Um, I'm, f I'm quite sure you'll uh, you'll own both anyways. Um, I've seen a lot of Defender fans go for Discovery 3s and some 4s. I think that's just because they're, they're a bit more of a everyday um, comfortable vehicle for work. I, I'm not gonna pretend like I know everything about both but the, uh, the Discovery I can just imagine is it was built for families, it was built for comfort, it was built it was built on the chassis of a Range Rover so of course it's um, it's going to be that in between between luxury and utility however obviously not as utility as the defender if you really want to go hardcore and buy something that will go everywhere doesn't matter if it gets beaten up uh, then defender's great um, I think living in the UK with a discovery as well for me personally uh, there's not a lot of places I've found that where the discovery where the defender goes that the discovery can't weigh up the comparisons and see which vehicle does the best for you but personally I'd go for the Discovery 4. I'll hold their value, I have a good feeling uh, that with the new Defender so you might as well start looking now, find one that's got a nice service history has been well looked after and if it were me I'd be keeping it running until the day I couldn't run it anymore <laughs> yeah definitely because the Defenders, I think the Defenders will always be about you know, people say, well, they've been discontinued, there's no more being made, but so has the Discovery 4 and the Discovery 3 and the Discovery 2. And, and they're also, the great thing is you can repair the older ones. With the Discovery 4, you can, if you know that skill set, it's not as accessible. Um, which doesn't put me off getting one, but it does mean that I'd be in more of a rush to look for a, defend a Discovery 4 or a Discovery 3 than a Defender. I hope that helped anyways because I know that you've been thinking about this for a very long time so um, let me know when you uh, when you come to a decision. There is no wrong choice to make in this matter so I think, you know, you're all good. What's your favourite Land Rover model and why? Brackets. A difficult one to answer, I know. That is a difficult one to answer. I think my favourite Land Rover... Mm. Um, I think my favourite Land Rover is the... Dis Discovery 3. I, I'd, I'd go for the Discovery 4, but um, nah, we'll go for the 3. It was bringing the icon into the 21st century, as uh, Land Rover stated themselves. It's, it's, it's true. Um, I love it for personal reasons. I love it for the shape, the personality. When you, when you sit in one, you've, it's just such a nice feeling. Even if you're a passenger, just sat in a Discovery in, in a 3 or a 4 is really... Um, it feels like you're sitting in a second home. I, I feel like that with my Land Rover anyways, but at the same time, um, no. The, Dis the Discovery 3 is definitely my favourite. I love the front grille, especially the first one with the, uh, I think it's three big plastic bars. Um, it's, it reminds me a little bit of the free, first Freelander one. And then the Freelander obviously changed it to the, the, uh, the grills. Um, definitely the Discovery 3. That is a really hard question to answer. <laughs> um, new Defender or new Discovery Sport? Oh, this is a good question actually just to write for my upcoming blog post about the new Discovery Sport that I was fortunate enough to drive this week. Um, I'd go for, I think I'd hold out for the new Defender, especially the 110. Um, I like the, I think the Discovery Sport, obviously, it, um, the Discovery Sport is one of Land Rover, is Land Rover's bestseller since it hit the shelves. And I think for four, all consecutive years now the Freelander when it launched was Land Rover's bestseller for five consecutive years 
been doing some of my homework, but um, no, that is, I think that says something when you've made a vehicle that's took over from another vehicle that's, it's, hold, it's holding its own. So no, I definitely, I definitely pay attention to the Discovery Sport, but in the long run, I'd hold out for the, Disco uh, the Defender 110. The, the Discovery Sport, don't get me wrong, it drove lovely. And I would definitely need to determine my proper answer on driving the new Defender. I'm a huge, I'm a huge Discovery fan, but in this, uh, in these circumstances, I'd probably, mm, I'd hold out for the 110. So there you go. I will probably use some of this for my blog my next blog post about the Discovery Sport. So if anyone would like to read that, um, please do. I'd really appreciate it. I, am, I enjoy the writing and the blogs, so thank you. If you could change one thing only on, say, a Defender, what would it be and why? Does it have to be the Defender? <laughs> uh, how can you make an answer here? I am going to make an answer. There's not a lot I would change on it, to be honest. It's not been changed for how many years? 35 years? It's practically unchangeable. I feel like that out of all the vehicles Land Rover have made, they've probably made the Defender and gone, yeah, that's it. But no, there is nothing I would change on the Defender. It's the workhorse, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. You could take one apart, put it in a box, and then put it back together years later, like your own little Meccano set. It's, it's beautiful. I think if I was going to change anything, I changed the seats. You know, that's something that people do anyways. That's not a that isn't a design fault with the defender. I'd I definitely make it a little bit more insulated. Um, especially with in the colder months like today. The same chap who has asked this question came with in with a great bit of advice on one of my recent posts saying in, in winter for a bit of extra heat he actually removes. I think the closest thing I can think is little rubber or plastic rivets. Um, pushed into the centre console of the defenders in the front. Um, you remove them and the heat comes through. Um, I, I'm sure a lot of you know that, but I didn't. And I, that's a really good bit of advice for anyone that is looking to stay a little bit more warm. Nope, I wouldn't change anything on the defender. It was designed perfectly the way it is. Thoughts on the Land Rover Discovery 3 and Range Rover L322. Um, come to notice that a lot of Discovery fans, especially of the 3 and the 4, like the L322. It has got a quite similar look to the Discovery. Um, I don't know a lot about them, I'm afraid. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to be completely honest. Uh, I've, I've said before, I don't know my Range Rovers, but I'm trying. Um, uh, the, the L322 was made when Land Rover was owned by BMW, so I can imagine it's got a nice vehicle. Um, Whereas the Discovery 3, well, it was taken over by Ford, and I think I'm going to have to look into that a little bit more. If there's anyone out there that owns them, please get in touch. I, uh, I'd like to do, I'd like to do more features on Range Rovers. So if you're watching this, and you own an L322, a P38, a Classic, Sport, Vogue, Villar, any of them, please get in touch. Um, what, do we also have an L403 or a Range Rover? Anyways, if you have one, please get in touch. I'd like to know more about them. I hope that answers it for you, but my thoughts on the L322 and the Discovery 3 together, I would say, yeah, I'd say they're a nice, I th I'd say they're a nice, um, a nice pair together. I can see why fans of both might, uh, switch. But Best mod or creature comfort to your Freelander TD4 aside from the coffee cups? <clears throat> I've, I've got quite an attachment to that Land Rover, so I um, think the whole vehicle is a creature comfort. I like that I can take the VCU off. Uh, I've heard a few, few, a bit of feedback from a few Freelander owners saying that taking the VCU off makes them a bit doddery. Uh, I find that it makes the power steering a tiny bit lighter, only slightly. So that yeah, the whole vehicle is my creature comfort. There's nothing I'd really change on it much, apart from get more coffee cups. What is your favourite aspect of being a Landy owner? Hmm, that's a bit like the what's your favourite Land Rover question. It's another difficult one to answer because then there's no wrong answers driving the Land Rovers. I'd definitely say the great people that I've met. It's definitely one of the best communities there is going. Land Rover for me is a really uh, big part of who I am. And I think it always will be, so. Is the Queen still actively driving Defenders? <laughs> I don't know. I uh, I haven't asked her, 
but um, she's also the queen of Land Rovers. So I wouldn't be surprised if the queen is uh, isn't out there right now on the estate, driving around her uh, Defender 9 EVA, or it could be a 110. Um, I also think she still drives a few series as well. Uh, I noticed her husband, uh, Prince Philip, drives a Freelander 2. I, I like that as well. Uh, you normally see the Range Rovers and the, uh, the new discoveries in all the photos. No, definitely the Queen does, ah uh, yeah, she definitely still drives a Defender. Um, she might, she might even drive a new one, who knows. In your opinion, what was the best year for Land Rover and why? That is a really good question. Hmm. Best year for Land Rover. <sighs> They've had a few good years as well. I would say it was the make, the production of the Discovery. And it's still pushing out bestsellers. I've n I don't think I've seen a Land Rover on the road as much as the Discovery. And that goes for all, Dis uh, all Discovery uh, models from the 1 all the way up to the 5 in the Sport. No, oh, I think that was definitely one of Land Rover's best years when they made the Discovery and then the 2 came out. And there was so much to be done with them as well. I mean, the development that went into them even after they had been produced was incredible. It, you could tell with the 3 that Land Rover weren't going to let go of the Discovery, which I think was really, really good. Instead of having a, a different name altogether and leaving, stopping at the 2, I think, no, I think Discovery is definitely one of Land Rover's best, best years. Um, but I do also think that the... Uh, Land Rover's next best years are going to be with the new Defender. Yeah, I think it's going to be great. I really do. I have so much faith backed up in it, so I do think that Land Rover have really got this right. Um, no. I can already see it. Uh, it's going to be great. You can't, you can't expect, uh, an icon. You can't expect an icon to be replaced. Um, I hope that if you've read if you've read my blog, if you read my blog about the new Defender, which um, I was so nervous about putting up, yeah, yeah, it's that's going to be Land Rover's best years. I wish I'd put that in it as well now, but I'm saying it. So if I'm wrong, no, I'm wrong, but I, I think it's going to be good. Original. Purist or modified? Um, I think each to their own, to be honest. I, uh, I personally am more of a purist, but um, people might argue with that because they're like, well, you've just gone on about the uh, the new Defender. I like to keep the vehicle standard. I like to see how they are. I like to see how they drive the way Land Rover intended them to be driven. Um, but in saying that, I'm quite, a cre I'm quite, you know, I'm a creative. So when I see a modified vehicle, it's like looking at someone's masterpiece, you know, it's not just just because someone else might not like it doesn't mean it's not incredible to look at. There's things that have come out of building modifications that have helped the community so much as well. So I, I completely support people that modify their vehicle as well as the memories that they share with it. and you know, spending the time with that vehicle. I'm a huge history nut as well. And to me, Land Rover's our history. What, what we're trying to do with Charlie is find all original Land Rover uh, mod modifications and products to uh, put on him. Because he's a bit of a history project in himself. We, we got some new tires, obviously. Um, uh, we actually got a set that fully match. We have the General Grabber 83s, so like a 50-50 tire. I think there's two types. Um, I'm not sure about. We do have the original Land Rover steering guard that's fitted underneath, which is just a bar, so you can't see it. But obviously, a new alternator after what happened at Gaydon, and he does have a new filter. Um, and he he went off roading and he performed incredibly well. I uh, I was so proud. He's uh, he's you know it's great to see what your vehicle can do. Yeah, I can talk Land Rovers all day too. You should talk about going off road. Going off road. Um, I'll do another video and talk about going off road. That sounds good. I uh, I won't do it in this video. But I feel like it's going to be long enough as it is by the time it's all edited down. I'll I'll definitely I'll do in my next video. I'll talk about going off road. Up another question and answer thing on my Instagram stories, so people can ask questions if they like. While we're on the subject of going off-road and modified vehicles, we took Charlie off-roading to Billing off-road um, at the end of September and he performed just as great as 
any other vehicle you know if you if you have a non-modified Land Rover and you feel like you want to test them out to see what they are fully capable of as a factory standard vehicle there is for me there was no better satisfaction but, you know it's great to see what your vehicle can do yeah it was great so um, I will just do a video purely talking about off-road so there we go what is good Land Rover Freelander 2 2013 or Range Rover Evoque I'm not entirely sure the Range Rover is the, the Evoque's a vehicle that I haven't driven and I've heard some uh, I've heard some interesting uh, experiences with them. I've seen people off-road uh, evokes and I've definitely seen a lot of people I've definitely seen, definitely seen a lot of people um, off-roading Freelander 2s and they are awesome to off-road. I am um, if I got one I would definitely be lifting that a little bit even though I've just said <laughs> even though I've just said I'm not into modifying vehicles I would definitely lift a Freelander 2 and take that off-roading everywhere on a pair of 50-50 tires that is that would be, if I couldn't have my Discovery 3 slash 4 dream, that would be the next best thing for me. Sorry if I'm fidgeting about a bit guys, um, it's really cold in here, but I am determined to finish this in the Land Rover, so I'm just going to push on and see how many of these I can answer before I uh, can't feel my fingers anymore. Fave Land Rover, mine's V8, yeah, yeah, mine's, a, mine's probably a fav favourite uh, Discovery 1 V8. In green. <laughs> Not biased whatsoever. No. Um, I've already answered the question, but um, favourite Land Rover is a Discovery 3. Um, and then the, I think, the Freelander 2, maybe. Yeah. Good, cho good choice though. I mean, a V8 Discovery 1 facelift um, in dark green is. That's a good choice. Um, why is a Defender slash series pretty much the only car in the world that looks better with dents? I think I think it's just from the fact that they are so square. I mean, even when you try and bash the dents out, they still look great. They um, I think it just adds personality to them. Yeah, definitely. Um, that is definitely you're right there. They are the uh, the only vehicle really that looks good with dents. I mean. My Freelander's got a dent on the on every door, except for the rear door. One it was not my fault. I am not the best at parallel parking, which is how most of my accidents have happened. But um, fortunately, fortunately, into trees. It doesn't. It doesn't look great, especially in black as well. It just doesn't. It doesn't quite pull it off. I, yeah, you get what I mean. So um, <laughs> yeah, that's a. You're right there, they do look very good with uh, a few dents. Any rooftop tent in the plans? Um, I really wish, they look awesome. Um, I don't... I, I don't... I'm not, I don't, I'm not doing anything right now that uh, really validates me having one. Um, I, I mean, I would really like to have one, but they... Um, no, they're just... they don't seem to be... they don't seem to be something I desire at the moment and I like the idea of being able to just hitch it up on the top of your vehicle if you know if you're camping and you've had a long journey it definitely saves pitching up the last time I went camping we ended up pitching a tent on top of an anthill and the aunt and my friend drew all the ants into her sleeping bag no one else just hers so um that was a really hard night and we were about Half half a mile, possibly up a big hill, and down a like into this little where a, where a stream was, and she was she really wanted to go back and sleep in the Freelander. So um, yeah, I definitely I can see why roof tents. A lot of people say, why do you need a roof tent? Because there's no tigers and lions and crocodiles in England, so you don't really need one. But I I'm, I beg to disagree because they are. Uh, they're really cool, they're convenient, they're easy. So no, as far as a roof tent's concerned, I uh, sadly don't have plans for one at the moment, but um, maybe one day when I uh, when I have my Discovery 3 or 4, I'll get a roof tent for one. And if not, I will just sleep in the Discovery because I've heard that is a good, uh, a good call too. And it's quite doable, so either way, I'm, I'm quite happy. What is your favourite engine and why? Oh, that. 
I'll show you why. good did that sound you don't need to straight pipe now that roar is just so powerful and beautiful in every way it's like being an extra from the lion king it is so good there you go that's my favorite engine and the little preview is why <sighs> that was fun anyways we'll uh we'll crack on <sighs> why land rover you know they're not like any other vehicle i've ever come to to see the first land rover i sat in was a defender 110 must have been, I think I was 16, but um, my, my dad said it was really icy and I said, I'm not going to get there, I'm not going to make it. And he said, we'll take the Defender. I had no clue what he meant, but we went and we went and had a little play on some ice, thick ice, um, laying on, the, on this car park. And, and I think since then I was hooked. It was just fantastic. Um, yeah, I definitely, yeah. I definitely can remember that and, I, and it was terrifying as well but it didn't nothing about the vehicle seemed unsure of itself it was just perfect I definitely remember that's how I got into Land Rovers anyways and then ever since then I was just always drawn to them that's where I am now so would you have liked Land Rover to have made a shorter wheel based Discovery 3 I am going to make one that sounds cool. That sounds really cool. I, uh, that's not something I've ever thought about before. Yeah, I would have. I would have really liked Land Rover to have made a shorter wheelbase D3. I mean, no, I think that's a really good idea. There was definitely not enough wheelbases for the Discovery 3, so why not make one? Um, I'd like to know how you go about making it as well. Get in touch when you can and let me know um, how that project goes and what your developments are. Because um, as a huge Discovery 3 fan, I'd like to cover that for a for a feature so please get in touch do you like the lads for our model land rovers off-road yes of course i love the lads um yeah keep bringing more keep bringing more stories about the lads um i think that's such a cool uh, account that you've got going as well um so keep it up and that is model land rovers off-road that i'm talking about there that's <laughs> you can guess that's their question I know I love the lads and I, I particularly like the fact that there is a good combination of model Land Rovers that go off on adventures including is it Charlotte the Freelander? Keep that up and I, uh, I really do enjoy seeing what they get up to so. Hmm. Discovery or Defender? Hmm. I just have both. <laughs> yeah, I like the Discovery but um, there's nothing better than having the best of both worlds and having both. So um, yeah, the, the, the dream combination for me would be Discovery 3 or 4 and the Defender 90 or 110. But then again, you could be talking about the new Defender and Discovery. And in that case, that's a whole other concept as well. But no, I'm a huge fan of the Discovery um, as a whole. So I, um, yeah. I definitely would have a Discovery first, but I I really do enjoy driving Defenders, so no, that's a, that's, that's a really difficult question, but um, I'd like both. Um, that's cheating though, so no, Discovery a Discovery, and then a Defender, so I'm still cheating. <laughs> I'm really sorry if I haven't been able to answer all the questions. But um, I'm getting very cold now and my phone's on about 8% battery. I just want to say a great big thank you to everyone who is following the page, um, who enjoys the content. I hope you keep enjoying it. And thank you for watching this video. It really does mean a lot to me. The next one's going to be 
off-roading and talking about Land Rovers. Please, if there's anything you'd like to hear in the video, get in touch and your feedback, of course, because that is why I, I extremely value all of the feedback that you guys give me. So thank you.